Hey everyone. Um, John's looking over. Can you just give us a thumbs up that the audio is okay? Can anybody have their camera on or if they can put it in the chat, make sure you can hear us okay? Thumbs up. Some thumbs up. Yeah, we got some thumbs up. Good. Good. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, you need to get in the shot. We always like to start nice and on time. We're going to be tag team in this. So you'll hear from both of us. Uh, we will be stretching. So if you have a yoga mat, a bit of wall space, some sort of a cushion for like a pillow to kneel on, um, that would be helpful. Um, but if you don't, you'll be able to manage as well. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm Sita. I'm John. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. We are, of course, Bendable Body. And uh, today we're um, offering you guys a stretching webinar, how to target the root cause of pain and injury so you can keep doing the things you love. And that's pretty much our theme song right there. So um, so let's get started and, and go over what, what we're going to do tonight and, and that kind of thing. Uh, let's see. So first of all, you are in the right place if you're trying to solve pain and injury and stay flexible and strong, or if you're an athlete who wants to have personal bests. You are also in the right place if you're feeling hopeless that no one has answers to help thus far in your exercise and health journey. You're also in the right place if you're afraid you won't be able to keep doing the things that you love to do. And you are also in the right place if you're ready to commit the important words commit to an exercise method that gets to the root cause of pain, injuries, flexibility, and strength, because that is what we are all about here at Bendable Body. You are in the wrong place if you don't like learning new approaches. By now in the training, you should know that what we offer is new and different. You are also in the wrong place if you aren't willing to dedicate 15 to 20 minutes a day or a few times a week to your health and you lack basic mobility. Okay. You're also in the wrong place. If you're someone who likes to check out when you work out and just tick that box, like listening to music, watching TV, reading, this is not the method for you. You are also in the wrong place. If you don't like free content, which you've been getting for the last two weeks, and which we're going to give you tonight, followed by an insanely good offer. Cause we are going to tell you about what else we offer this evening. So that's, what's going on. Our promise to you. We will deliver as much value as we can in the next 30, 60 minutes, not 30, 60. We try to keep it to 60. We might go over a little. Uh, nothing we teach today is based on theory. It's based on a lot of years of experience. In return, we're asking that you keep an open mind about the new information you're going to learn today and that you participate in the class and stretch with us. So often we just see people watching us stretch. We need you to get up and stretch with us. That's key so that you can actually implement what you learn and have a physical experience. This is a physical modality. We will be stretching tonight. Tips for watching this training, get in a quiet room, turn off your phone so you can devote your full attention. As I mentioned before, yoga mat, cushion, bit of wall space, Close the other tabs on your computer so that you have plenty of bandwidth. Give the next hour to yourself. This is about you. What you can expect to learn. So we're going to recap uh, the material in videos one to three that you have access to and will continue to have access to through October 15th. So you have time to still watch them again. The real cause of stiffness when it comes to the tissue in your body, your lack of flexibility is because you haven't paid attention to your fascia. The keywords fascia. We're going to cover that again. Um, a new way to stretch and the biggest mistakes people make when stretching that actually decreases your flexibility. So we're going to teach you how to break free of your aging, tired self that has limited what you can do. We're also going to teach you the secret to reclaiming your life and health so you can keep doing what you love to do, no matter what your injury pain point is, injury or pain point, because I know that everybody has different sy symptoms. Um, okay. So I want to talk right now about some bonuses and it also kind of starts to get into the additional material we're going to cover tonight. Meridian stretch guide. So what is this? It's a printable PDF of the 16 meridians and, and it's a stretch guide, a cheat sheet that tells you some of the major physiological and emotional associations with each of the 16 stretches and meridians that we target at bendable body. So what you may or may not know is that our stretches al align with the meridian channels, according to TCM, and they target organs and physiological health. So we're going to talk about that. We also have a bonus that is the cheat sheet to that. 
Another bonus we have is a running bonus because many people stop running because their hips hurt, their knees hurt, their ankles hurt, whatever it may be. But there's actually a way that you can run that won't hurt your joints, will protect them and get your heart rate up. So we're going to talk about, um, so that's another kind of bonus and something that we're going to get into tonight. So just take a moment. I've told you about the two bonuses just so that we have a feel for what's how, how people are thinking about this, which ones of more interest to you out there. If you want to put it in the chat running or Meridian, we would love to know. John's kind of keeping an eye on the chat. We would just love to know which one's more popular. Just let us know. Okay. The other thing I'd like you to do, are we getting Meridians or running? What are they putting? It's all Meridians. All Meridians. <laughs> That's always the case. But anyway, um, there's usually some runners out there too. Um, so what I want you to do is just take a minute. Okay. It doesn't have to be long. And if you don't have paper, I'm sure you can keep track of it in your head. No big deal. I want you to think of two physical activities that you love to do. And it doesn't have to be like tennis or jogging or, or that kind of thing. It could be knitting. It could be gardening. It could be cooking just two physical activities that you really like to do. And then once you've got that in your head, I want you to think of the two injuries or pain points or problem areas in your body. Maybe you have more than two, but what are the first two that come up? Maybe you have less than two. What's the one that comes up? So if you can kind of just think of that. And now I want you to kind of think about where would you love to see your activity level in five years? Like, do you see yourself still doing all the stuff that you love to do? Or do you see yourself doing less of it? Kind of just make a mental note of that. Imagine yourself having a better body in, in five, five years. years. Exactly. And so now we want to get your opinion, right? So who lives a full life into old age, seemingly getting younger and younger than their peers? We're going to give you a couple options. After working with thousands of clients, and I literally mean thousands, we have seen that people fall into two primary categories, right? The first is in pain, Peggy, we call her, but you could call her in pain, Susie or whatever. She thinks she needs to strengthen and stretch in the places she has pain. And just think about that for a second. And maybe you want to throw up a hand or put something in the chat. Are you one of those people to think, oh, I need to stretch or strengthen where I feel the pain? Because that's a really common misconception that most people have. She's afraid to try new exercises because she doesn't want to make it worse, which we also get a lot of. And that's a lot of what people are thinking. And she spends a lot of money on massages, physical therapy, foam rollers, balls, and in the end just takes painkillers or gets surgery. How many people out there in that boat, in that boat, if you want to throw a hand up, we would love to know. I know I've been there. John's been there. Oh, yeah. A lot so, of people we know have been there. Been there. She's been, been there. So uh, bucket two, Conscious Connie, and this is actually one of our um, students. So, and her name is Connie. <laughs> Connie is a seeker who knows that only she can be responsibility, be responsible for her health. You have to take responsibility. She has an open mind and loves to try new things because she's clear what doesn't work. She has perspective. She's tried a lot of things. Committed to working hard for her health every day. She, she shows up, you know, she has no pain does what she wants when she wants. And here's the key. She knows how to fix a pain point should it arise. She's self-empowered that way. And that's really what we want for everybody. And that's what this method's all about. So you've got in pain, Peggy, and you've got conscious Connie. And I'm sure you already know who lives a full life into old age, doing all the things that they love to do. It's clearly Connie, right? Oops, why doesn't this work sometimes? So stretching is how both John and I overcame pain, stiffness, and a number of other things in our lives. And we both have our individual stories, but just for the purpose of time and interest, actually, John's is pretty interesting. John's going to tell you his background. So I'm going to hand it over to him now because all stretching methods are not created equally. They're not. They're not. They're definitely not created equally. It's how we target the fascia. Uh, where physically that's the root cause that matters most. So hello, there I am in a handstand. handstand. So I have not been a flexibility trainer my whole, whole life. I've been in corporate world. I spent uh, 15 years in finance and I currently help people with their pain and injuries in their bodies. And this chart um, will give you a little bit of background on how much experience uh, you, I have, have, and we have, uh, and working with people and, you know, the self-stretching 
enormous amounts of time self-stressing is something I've probably done. I'll be conservative and say five out of seven days a week for almost 19 years here. Um, 19 years as a flexibility trainer, I said 16, but we're moving along here. Uh, I've gotten stretched, the luxury of getting stretched uh, with this method. And, but I stretched so many people over the years, uh, you know, thousands of clients and many, many hours. That's really the bread and butter. Um, and what you learn when you're stretching other people's body and you feel this fascia so halting and it's so limiting for people of all ages. It's not any easier stretching a 90-year-old than it is a 26-year-old NFL player versus a 12-year-old kid. It's really, it's sort of a level playing field that takes us all down at various ages. Uh, love teaching, uh, something that I really enjoy teaching this method about the resistance stretching and modifications for people that need them. And it's kind of like a hobby for me to do research and, and study about the body, movement, um, inter mixing in different modalities, but it's purely resistance stretching and how to make everything else, better, everything else that you like to do. So um, here's some pictures of what I used to look like. Um, I never had a constant weight. It was always up going up or is going down i would run to and it would go back up again chronic allergies inflammation digestion severe back pain for 20 years and uh depressed but you know and that was my 20s and 30s uh so here i am now in, at 58 and i look much better i feel much better there's seriously no pain or anything going on but little things that pop up you like con conscious conning you know what to stretch to take care of it. And um, they, they happen all the time, but if you get them right away and you address it right away. So all these allergies I had, the back pain's gone, the inflammation, I don't have no inflammation, but it's under control. Uh, digestion is great and everything's, everything's moving along. And I did that with resistant stretching alone. I did not run. I did not lift the weight. I do not die. Um, Resistance stretching is powerful. So I used to be in peg pain, banged up Johnny, however you want to call it here. And I knew I had to do something to change. And living in a body didn't feel good most of the time. And working in a job, I mean, you can all relate, right? Things are things are difficult. And um, the body doesn't help as we sit too long and do all these things. The first year into stretching, and I'm looking forward to your first year, um, I was pain-free, allergy-free, waking up, feeling really incredible as I do now, almost 20 years later. And you really think in one year, what do you think your body will feel like? You know, you really, I mean, it's really hard to imagine because I know you've done the, all the fitness classes, you've done things you love to do. Things might've showed up that stopped you from doing the things you love. So Kind of write that down and be with it. I was making mistakes, uh, some really big mistakes that kept me stuck. We talked about some before, you know, going after the pain points directly. And if you're making any of these mistakes, it's okay because you're not alone. Uh, in order to get mistake number one, in order to get flexible and pain-free, you have to be born that way or spend decades in a yoga class. I did yoga for three years and I thought everyone just did so much yoga that that's how they got flexible or they were born that way, and I wasn't born that way. Um, so if you want to get flexible and remove pain, you need an exercise that focuses on the source. And it really is this connective tissue, this fascia, which we'll talk about a little more later. I did three years of yoga. I never got off the yoga blocks, never got rid of my back pain. I did enjoy the classes, but I didn't get any results. Um, I just thought that's how it was. And after my first year of resistance stretching, I was more flexible than I've ever been in my entire life by a lot. Um, wow. Splits. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm resisting because I, I can't, of course, I can't do a full split. I, that's not my goal. I was just doing a stretch that way, but you know, here's one of the members 
So here's Mary Jane's experience. My body is very different than it was when I started a year ago. I wasn't able to do some of the stretching and the Pilates that I had been doing for a long time. I was very depressed about it as I had already had to give up running over 10 years ago. These exercises have made all the difference. Getting rid of the hard fascia was the answer. Even my hands, I was worried that I was going to have to quit knitting and playing the piano, but my hands have gotten stronger and I do the finger exercises pretty much daily. I will start doing the figure eight. She's referring to the running bonus that nobody was interested in. Um, as oh, soon as it so. gets a little warmer here, I'm turning 70 in a few months. And instead of being afraid for the future, I'm now looking forward to having a strong, energetic body that will allow me to do the things I love to do. Thank you both again. So yeah, pretty compelling. And here's Deborah. I've had tons, I've done tons of strength training and my trainers are always telling me how strong I am for my age, but I kept feeling like I use the wrong muscles, which causes me pain. Same thing happens when I took private Pilates and yoga classes. This type of stretching really shows me where I'm weak. I have low back pain, but it is getting better as I have been taking your classes. So mistake number two, and this might be one that some of you are making out there. I know it was when I was making stretching strengthening and posture are all separate and require different exercise methods. And I don't have the time or the money for all of it. Not true folks, not true at all. There is a better way. Flexibility, strength, and posture go together. They absolutely do. And they can, can be addressed simultaneously. And if you're not doing this, you're actually missing the boat but we get it. We're all getting bombarded with fitness, wellness, health tools, diet programs, everything to target something different all day long. It really doesn't have to be that complicated. So you can stop the fear that you need to do it all or that what you do will injure you further. It's just not true. If you knew the right thing to do, you only need one method that goes to the root cause of it all and also protects your joints from injury and has no plateaus mm -hmm. that we can see. So Anne, is stretching helping me feel less pain and stiffness? Absolutely. I can honestly say that my knee pain has decreased by 80 to 90%. How many people can say that? In the mornings, no more shuffling around to get my joints warmed up. I feel like I'm moving more like I did 10 to 15 years ago. Is that possible? I was not expecting these wonderful changes. And that's our observation that we're all kind of 15 years older than we need to be. Um, Julie, my knees used to be super crunchy, totally gone now. And my vision keeps getting better. No phone flashlight when reading the menu and cellulite disappearing on my legs. It's pretty sweet. Mistake three. You want to do this one, John? The more you work out, the better it will get. And working through the pain, I was part of the... This, Wait, uh, can you repeat that? That was a little unclear. The more you work more out... You work out and work through the pain, the better you will get. And that's mistake number three. Uh, back in the day, it was on the gym walls was no pain, no gain. And that is absolutely wrong. Uh, when you overdo and push through the pain, you make it worse. And um, until you can't work until out, until you can't work out at all. And so uh, we get it. I used to th throw on my running shoes every time I needed to lose weight. And I always, like I said before, gained it back. And now look, we're addressing the root cause of the stiff, unhealthy body has gotten me. Uh, there you go. Uh-huh. Um, I'm about eight pounds heavier than that, but that after shot, but I'm within a 10 pound range for like 19 years. And I never, I ran once with an athlete and I didn't want to do it, but I had to, I don't run. I literally, and I love sprinting here and there. I've done it 10 times in 20 years. Um, so who believes it's easier to get fit and pain-free just stretching and doing a combo of versus, cardio versus, versus um, doing a combination of cardio, weights, yoga, I did all diet. that stuff and you think you're really cranking it out, but. So here are a few people that um, stretch regularly and, you know, are testing and they tell us, cause we don't actually have these devices. Um, according to my Fitbit, I don't have a Fitbit. This was an impressive fat burning series of exercises. 44 minutes of 45 was fat burning rate. Diane, I swear more than I sweat, I swear, I sweat more than cardio at the gym. Be present in the stretch as per John. Uh, Nancy, biggest calorie burning class yet. My Apple rat watch read 190. Usually I get 130. So you're absolutely burning calories and burning fat when you stretch with resistance, which is not typical of traditional stretching. Tracy Lee would only have 18 to 20 minutes of fat burning. 
Let's see, uh, Elizabeth, I am addicted to bendable body. My sister-in-law came to see me for the first time this weekend in a long time. She couldn't believe how good I looked. Um, the bendable body method is the one exercise method that will get you strong, pain-free and keep you that way. So what we're really trying to drive home right now is that this really is, um, a catch-all method. It covers everything. You don't have to go outside of resistance stretching to get your exercise in. And I think that that's really helpful because nobody has a lot of time to do a bunch of things. Um, so we have a stretching system that targets the root cause of pain and injury. And we outlined that system in videos one to three. We're going to go over that again when we're finished with this portion of the webinar. So stay tuned. You also have access to those videos through the 15th. So the big question is, how can you apply this method in your daily life and start feeling amazing so you can do all the things that you love to do? Well, you have a couple choices. You can be like Peggy or you can be like Connie. So Peggy, waste a ton of time and effort. Try and figure it out all, all out on your own. Connie, fast track your results, hang out with us and get involved in our membership, The Bendables. So we are enrolling now. We're going to briefly tell you about the membership and then we're going to get into the stretching. So sit tight because I know that, you know, this part can be a little tedious. We want to give you a bird's eye view of what you get immediate access to inside our membership program. So you've had a free training. Now we're telling you about one of our paid products. So the membership, what does it include? 200 high, it's actually more than 200 high quality on demand stretching vid videos that target just about every injury and pain point you can think of. So it's a very large library, but it's also delineated in a way that's super simple and straightforward. Stretch flows, they range from 10 to 40 minutes. We know that most people want to spend about 15 and that's how long most of them are. We also have multiple stretches for each of the major muscle groups now in the body. Now, if you were to take the entire content of the library, cause it's huge, the value of it easily, if we were just selling it as is would be in the range of $4,000, which of course that's not what we even come close to charging. Um, inside the membership, you have the super year program. So what is that? It's like week to week curated flows that you can do where you don't have to figure out what to stretch. We just tell you what to stretch. So it's a program that you can follow for 50 two weeks straight. You can also start and stop because it's repetitive. So if you miss a few weeks, you can come back to it and it doesn't matter what your injury or your pain point is because it touches on all of them at one point or another in the program. 15 minute flows and multiple levels of stretches. So like I said, most of the flows are in the 15 minute range. We call a routine or an um, exercise class, a flow. So that's what I'm talking about. They target really, really common and also not so common issues like back, hips, knees, neck, things like TMJ. There's a facelift flow, a metabolism flow. We also have multiple versions of single stretches so that you have easier to more challenging tutorials and eBooks. So there's a whole tutorial section. So you don't ever have confusion about technique. We also provide eBooks. If you're the kind of person that likes to print it out and have a hard copy, this is the biggest daily access to John and I. So there's a comments area under every video and John and I check those daily. You pretty much have access to two flexibility experts with a lot of experience every single day for any question you might have. A search index. So there's over a hundred terms that you can search from injuries to areas of the body, to physiological problems, to emotional problems. You put it in the search index and the stretches that will help with that come up. So it's really thorough that way. Um, for members, we have two bonus live classes. They're an extra to the membership. The bulk of the membership is all the on-demand con uh, content, but you can show up live twice a week with John for 15 minutes and stretch. And if you miss it, the recording gets saved to the membership. You also get 50% off of our longer, we have 45 minute live Zoom classes that are a completely separate product, but all members get 50% off of that. And when you add the cost of the membership with that 50% off those live classes, it's less money than the classes at full price. So it's a really good deal for members. And those two live classes, uh, afterwards members can show us their stretching technique and we can improve it. Answer so that's questions. another added value that you'll have. Members only Facebook group where you get to meet other members and ask questions and make friends. It's pretty cool. 
Um, we keep adding content. We have special guest speakers. So it's a growing membership. And today everybody gets both bonuses. I know that the Meridian stretch guy was more popular, but if you join today, everybody, no matter what payment plan you choose, gets both. They're yours. You heard it today only though. So today's the key day because we want to encourage you to make a decision. Sometimes that can be hard. Um, so just to remind you, the Meridian Stretch Guide is an ebook where we go through all 16 muscle groups and the organ that they affect in the body, which is really interesting information. We're going to talk about it when we get into the teaching component tonight. The running tutorial, we give you a way to run that won't injure you. It's a video. It's it's a really great little bonus. Um, so the doors are officially open. John just put the link in the chat. We're going to email it out to you tomorrow, but you want to grab it today so you can get these bonuses. The cost of the membership is $45 monthly or $450 yearly. Both plans get absolutely everything. The difference between the monthly and the yearly is really in payment. The yearly you get two months free. So you're saving $90 in a 12 month period. We also give yearly subscribers one extra pretty sweet bonus, a free 12 pack of 45 minute Zoom classes. Those are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 11 a.m. It's a pretty tight knit group. Both of us teach, we put eyes on you. It's a great way to start off your year if you do wanna commit. Um, so you get everything otherwise with both of them. There's the link, it's in the chat, you can join now. So if you're on the fence, you're like, come on, another scam, another thing I have to pay for, et cetera, just try it. If you don't like it in 30 days, you just send me an email. We'll give you your money back. We're really not difficult that way. We know that this is a method that people don't know about, and we really want to give you a chance to try it so you can do so without any kind of a financial commitment that way. Um, we will refund your money within the first 30 days. You have my word. This only applies to the monthly. We don't do it for the yearly because that would just be not uh, sustainable, but for the monthly. So if you're on the fence, that's your payment plan monthly. And we will give you your $45 back. Uh, Judy, can I brag for a minute down 30 pounds since the end of the year, a one C down 1.1 points and HDL up 10 points due to your stretching exercises. According to the doctor, pretty sweet. Brenda, this is the last one you guys were getting there. I have been dealing with low back for uh, almost 25 years. I found a chiropractor six years ago that knows how to release muscle tightness, but the issue doesn't stay corrected. And I have to do maintenance every five weeks, which is actually not that often for a chiropractor. Two weeks ago, I was experiencing a bout of a very sore back. Um, I had two or three treatments a week, but it was not responding. So even with this horribly sore back, I did three hamstring stretches. My back was still sore the next day, but I noticed it was improving as the day wore on. By the next day, the intense pain and tenderness was basically gone. So I canceled my next chiropractor appointment. This is really key. I'm about to kind of go over fascia one more time with you guys. And this testimonial in particular relates to that. So the question is, how much is your life currently impacted by pain and injury? Go ahead, put it in the comments. We would love to hear. John's still keeping an eye on those. And is it worth $45 a month, 450 bucks a year to do something about it? Because we guarantee if you show up and you do it, you're gonna absolutely get results. So you've got all of the on-demand videos. You've got the super year program, the tutorials in the, e in the eBooks, the search index, the live classes for members, the discount on the longer live classes, guest speakers, live class recordings, new content all the time, huge library. And it's, that's, that's what it is. So 45 bucks today, how many activities that you love could you keep doing or start doing again? And is that worth just over a dollar a day to you, which is about what it is. The question isn't whether you will get, will get results. It's what do you plan to do once you are feeling amazing? Okay. <laughs> So I'm just going to leave you right here with this. And well, you've got the link in the chat. I think I can probably remove, stop sharing my screen. We're going to answer questions that you might have about the membership at the end. Um, but I kind of want to, I'm going to fill the screen now just with me. So I can just kind of go into fascia a little bit with you guys. So I need to stop share. There we go. Let's get rid of this. Just bear with me. Let me pin myself. Hmm. What's the issue here? I think I must be in gallery mode, speaker mode. There we go. Okay, cool. 
So um, if you want me to be the main person you're looking at, you just need to click on that little um, icon in the upper right and it's gonna change to speaker mode. Otherwise you're gonna be looking at a bunch of little boxes of everybody that's here. So video one in the training was on fascia. And I'm just gonna give you a quick 101 on fascia. And then John's gonna go over the four pillars of a stretch because a lot of people don't even know what fascia is, right? So very briefly, it's connective tissue, okay? And it, it literally connects all the other tissues in your body. It's the only tissue that touches all of the tissues in the body. Under a microscope, it looks like a three-dimensional web and it's essentially made up of water and collagen. So like seawater and collagen. So when it's healthy, it's like a water web, a three-dimensional water web. But what happens over time from injury, repetitive movement, trauma, lack of movement, it mats on itself and it gets dense and hard, it loses its hydration, it loses its pliability. Um, a really simple example would be like your skin, you know, when you're a baby, it's like soft and plush and hydrated and movable and elastic. But then as you get older, think about like the skin on the back of your heel, how it gets hard. Everybody knows that, right? So that's basically what happens to fascia over time. And the reason it matters so much is because of where it exists in the body. It surrounds and penetrates all of your muscles. So we're thinking we want to be strong. We're thinking we want to be flexible. And we're thinking we're going to do that without addressing the fascia. It's ludicrous. You have to address it. It is the limiting factor, a hundred and thousand percent in flexibility and in strength. Okay. And that's what these movements do. It requires its own movement. You aren't going to target it or even access it with traditional stretching, nor will you with, um, strength training. Now there are a number of, um, like manipulation therapies out there, massages and tools and those kinds of things that do target fascia, but they're doing it from the outside, right? So they have to penetrate through the skin and the fat, and it can be really painful. And it's also not as effective as when you resist and stretch because you generate force from the inside and you directly target it and there's zero pain. So if you want to get strong, if you want to get flexible, if you want to get rid of the pain and the injuries, if you want your alignment to come back, because anything going on in terms of alignment in the spine, a pitch forward neck, a flex pelvis, it's the fascia that's holding your body in that position. You've got to address it. Okay. So now John's going to go into the four pillars of the stretch video two, and we're going to go over the stretches that we did in there. You got to learn how to resist and I'm going to be watching you stretch. So please turn on your camera. Don't waste this training. Let us make sure that you know what you are doing. So turn your camera on. Let me see you stretch, get up and stretch while John's explaining the four pillars of a stretch. I see people sitting down. Don't do it, man. Get up, okay, do it. So there's always a start position and it's where you're comfortable. This first stretch for the shoulder one arm at a time. It's the large intestine meridian. Uh, we're going to have our arm up. We're going to grab the elbow. So this is the star position. Some people will be here. Some people will be here. Wherever you are, it's fine. Nice, comfortable stance. Your knees want to be relaxed. So pillar one, star position. Pillar two, the resistance. So we add the resistance. So your elbow and your hand are going to have a little tug of war. Your elbow is going to be going back. Your hand is going to be pulling. So you start the resistance. So now you got the resistance pillar two. Pillar three is the stretch with resistance. So you pull. And then pillar four is let it go. No, no resistance and go back to the start. So pillar one is the position. Pillar two is the resistance. Pillar three is the stretch. Pillar four is let it go. And so we're going to do about a dozen of these. Okay. Start. Your, your start position will probably improve. It'll probably start to go back further, easier to get the arm. And that muscle group that we're stretching to shorten. Are you resistant, Paula? It doesn't look like it. I don't see a lot of resistance. Grabbing the elbow. You're not pushing the elbow from the inside. You're grabbing the elbow from the outside. Your elbow's resisting. Let it go. That helping hand should be working pretty hard to pull the arm to center against resistance. 
You want to grab the elbow, Marion, and go a lot slower. You're going way too fast. You know, at any point during this resistance stretching, no matter what your range is, uh, you should be able to resist maximally. You don't have to resist maximally. Every once in a while, it's good to do. But, okay, all right. Bat a dozen, check it, shake it out a little bit. See what you notice. You can feel the difference between the two shoulders. Um, and that's your change. Uh, we recommend you do three sets. So let's do the other side. Pillar one is the start position. Grab your elbow. And then pillar two is the resistance. So you resist in the stretch. And then pillar three is the stretch with resistance. And then relax on the way back, pillar four. Let it go and go back to the start. Start resisting. Before your movement starts, start to resist. So resist and then stretch. So I'm seeing some people that, that are focused on the end range. You want to focus on the beginning range, not the end range. And Mora, are you cupping your elbow and pulling it to center? That's what you need to be doing. You need to be pulling the elbow to center against resistance. Looks good. That looks really good, Sue. Stay with it. Stay with it. Let's keep going here. We're resistance stretching our shoulder. Looks really good, Tammy. Improving the health of our large intestine. and That looks better, Marion. This helps with blood pressure. Looks good, Elaine. Cindy looks good. Marlene looks good. Judy looks good. Okay, okay, okay. So that took some tension out. That feels good. Now let's do a leg stretch. Uh, this will be a hamstring stretch that wasn't in the free training. It's just a really basic one that you'll uh, want to learn. Uh, we're going to do it for the lateral hamstring, the back outside of the leg. Take a little step forward. Turn the leg out. So take a little step forward with, I'm going to do the right leg and then turn the leg out. Both knees are bent. Okay. So this is the start position, pillar one. Pillar two is the resistance. So know the muscle group you're stretching, which is the back outside of your leg. And that'll help you uh, just remember what's going on. Pull the heel back. Heels pulling back. And then you can feel the back of your leg engage. Keep pulling back. And pillar three is the stretch. Pillar four is let it go and come back up to the start. So pull the heel back. Pull the heel back. Continue to pull the heel back as you fold forward. And then relax on the way up again. We'll do about a dozen of these. This is for the bladder meridian. Uh, your bladder organ improves the health of your bones. It'll help create uh, bone density where there is bone loss. Also really good for low back pain. Yeah, this is a good stretch that uh, we do a lot of the hamstrings, particularly the bladder. So you want to flex your foot too. That's helpful for resistance. What happens if you can't feel the stretch, John? Uh, fascia is not commonly felt. That doesn't mean you're doing it incorrectly. You want to feel your heel pulling back. And if you can feel your heel pulling back, and you have a slight bend in your knee and you're folding forward, you are getting a stretch and you are engaging the fascia and changing the fascia. So let's keep going here. Resist as you go. Fold forward, relax on the way up. We're going to do a few more. How's everybody doing? They're doing good. Everybody's doing it. Okay. All right. We'll just check it out. Shake that leg out a little bit. See how you feel. And then we'll do the other leg. So we broke it down into the four pillars of a stretch just to make it easy. You get into a start position and make sure it's comfortable for you. We're going to take a little step forward with that leg. We're going to turn the leg out, bend our knees. Now pillar two is the uh, resistance. We pull the heel back, that front heel. Pillar three, Fold forward for the stretch while you resist. It's resistance stretching. 
So you want to resist while you're lengthening the muscle. Resist while you're lengthening the muscle. And then let it go on the way back. We only resist in one direction, in the lengthening of the muscle. Pull the heel back, pull the heel back continuously. Some tips for stretching in this position. You know, you want to keep your pelvis level as best you can. Keep the ribs in your body. Keep your head up. Don't let the head dip down while you're doing this. And it's all for the sake of creating resistance to change the fascia. Otherwise, certainly do the movements that feel comfortable to you while you resist. So pull the heel back, pull the heel back. We'll do about a dozen. We're over halfway there. Uh, a breathing tip would be to breathe in and out through your nose. That's a healthy way to breathe. Let's do a couple more. Looks good, everyone. You want to keep a bend in that knee, Sue. No straight knees. That looks like a very straight knee, Sue. Yeah, you got to keep it bent or the stretch goes into the knee, which we don't want. Okay, how'd that feel? Feeling a little looser, a little more open on the front. So it, anything you notice, it's it's good to check out to see what's going on uh, and to see the results you're getting. Now we're going to go to the upper body. Are you going to uh, talk about the pelvis and the hamstrings? Video three? Video three. Okay, let's go right into the pelvis and the hamstrings. Really important. Um because the spine comes up from the pelvis, the legs go down from the pelvis, and the positioning of the pelvis is really important. So we're going to give you an example in the standing position. The pelvis always wants to be level, front to back, whether we're standing or whether we're sitting. And what happens, and you might notice this, most of the time, the pelvis is pitched forward when we stand. And then when we sit, I used to see this all the time on the subway, you'd be sitting and the pelvis be way, you know, tucked under quite a bit. Okay, when it's pitched forward, that's putting pressure on the spine and compressing the spine, okay? When it's pitched forward, the thighs also turn out. So that means if the pelvis is pitched forward, mine's slightly pitched forward, but it's much better than it used to be, looking forward to a level pelvis, getting close, um, that every move you make from that position, you're somewhat in alignment. When the pelvis is pushed forward, the spine is pressed, it's curved, the compression in the neck, arms get turned in, legs get turned out. So every move you make from that position is going to end up in an injury at some point in time. But the better aligned you are, right, level pelvis, legs turned in, everything moves more easily. And then the muscles that are supposed to contract when you make a certain move will contract, there'll be less substitution. And we focus on the hamstrings, the three hamstrings, the toughest tissue in the body to change the pelvis so that it can sit back. Because if the hamstrings are tight and any muscle that's tight, the muscles won't shorten and they get stuck mostly in a long position, especially in the back as it pushes us forward when we get a little older and the pelvis tilts forward as we get a little older. And we want to change that. What makes the hamstrings tight? Why, why are they so tight? Uh, they're fibrous by nature. The back of the body is generally tougher tissue. Like than the more front fascia? Of the body. Oh, much more fascia. Yeah, denser fascia. Uh, and that, it doesn't start out as any more fascia. It just becomes denser and denser uh, at a very young age and then continues that way as we get older. So why won't it work to straighten out your spine to like go to the chiropractor or you know do sit-ups for your core? Well, it will adjust your spine, but the fascia is what's pulling the spine out of alignment. So if you change your spine, you don't change the source. It goes back to the crooked way it was. Um, so the fascia is the root cause in terms of the tissue in the body to fix our bodies. So let's do another hamstring stretch. And it's just changing the foot position. This is a really good thing to know. So now we're going to take a little step forward with, with our foot straight. Okay, our legs are going to be straight. We're not going to turn it out like we did before to get the lateral hamstring. Straight ahead to get the central hamstring. This is the brain meridian. So again, uh, pillar one is the position, comfortable position. Pillar two is the resistance. Pull the heel back, pull the heel back, pull the heel back as we fold forward, relax on the way up. 
And you could feel, you can feel the center hamstring. It's a different muscle than the lateral hamstring. And we want to work individually on each hamstring. And that will help with our pelvis, the very important positioning of our pelvis, taking pressure off the spine and allowing our head, neck, and shoulders to move better. So resist, fully resist, and then make sure there's a little bend in your knee. It can be, a, you know, you can bend it as much as you like. And you can try different positions. You'll get different parts of your hamstring. But resistance is the key to changing the fascia. And it's actually the only way your muscles will ever stretch. You need resistance to stretch a muscle. Otherwise, it's overstretching. And it's uh, creating micro tears in the tissue if there's a lengthening without resistance. So let's just do a couple more. Stay with it. Stay with it. This is the brain meridian. It helps with the health of your brain and your nervous system. This particular stretch is great for knee pain. Okay. Okay. Let's shake that out a little bit. That feels really good. I do feel a little space in the knee. So let's switch and do the other leg. We're going to do the other leg, central hamstring, just a little step forward, not a big step forward. So John, what would you tell someone who's feeling it a lot in their back when they do this? I would shorten the range. And another thing, when you're resisting, you're doing these standing stretches, you can get close to a wall and hold balance on yourself. for balance. Yeah, hold on to the wall. If someone's feeling it, in the, I would add more force to the resistance and shorten the range. Add more force and shorten the range. So let's stretch the right central hamstring. I'm just going to demonstrate with a chair nearby. You can hold on to a chair. Because you don't want to focus on balance. You want to focus on resistance. And what would you say to someone who's like, should I feel more of the stretch the lower I bend? That That is true. You do feel it more. But as you start to feel it more, you're feeling the muscle and you're losing resistance and the fascia stops engaging at that point. Um, so I would add more force. If you want to go in greater range, pull the heel back even more, or I would just go back and start again and do another rep. The difference. So more is saying this is really similar to the last stretch we did. You want to talk about the difference between the foot position? Yes. Yes. The foot position, it is similar. We're doing this hand, two muscle groups right next to each other on the back of the leg. Foot straight ahead and you're pulling it back. Foot straight ahead. You're getting the central hamstring. That attaches to the inside of the lower leg. When you turn that foot out, you can feel it's a lateral hamstring and that attaches to the lower leg on the outside of the leg. Um, very different uh, functionings. One uh, rotates the leg in, one rotates the leg out. Um, one's associated with the brain, one's associated with the bladder. One helps knees, one helps ankles. One, yeah, and low back. So they're, they're, they're very different that way. Um, but in most of us, the hamstrings feel like one cement block on the back of the leg. So we want to change that. So that's our central hamstring. And now we're, do we have time to do this medial hamstring? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. So same thing. We'll make it simple so you can remember this going forward. Uh, now we're going to just take a touch more width between our legs, bend our knees. And now we're going to turn the leg in to get the medial hamstring. This is for... The, you improve the health of our hip joint, pancreas, organ, okay? So pull that heel back with the foot turned in a little bit, bend in the knee and fold forward. And that clearly is another muscle group. It's a different hamstring. It's the medial hamstring. So pull that heel back, pull that heel back. Now you'll find that this one, by creating a little more width in your stance, that you're pulling it back and it's coming going sideways and back. It's a, that's what's supposed to happen. It's like diagonally pulling back toward the standing foot. So keep those ribs in your body, pull the heel back continuously. The act of resisting is continuous. So you initiate the stretch with resistance and then you have to actively continually pull the heel back. You don't have to do it hundred percent. But if you start with 50%, you want to stay pulling 50% back. So John, someone's saying, how about a stretch for the hip flexors? Because mine are always tight. Do you want to talk about how, uh, you know, a hamstring stretch might actually help with tightness in the hip flexors? 
Yeah, the central hamstring will help with the hip flexors like the psoas major. Um, the hamstrings overpower the front of the leg, just like the shoulder, the muscles on the back of the shoulders overpower the chest muscles. Um, and by doing the central hamstring and by changing the pelvis and the rotation, you're nat it's naturally going to take pressure off of the hip flexor because the hip flexor gets tense a lot because the pelvis is flexed, because the leg is turned out, it's constantly being overstretched in that rotation. So we want to change the central hamstring. So shake that out for the medial hamstring. See how that feels. Another different feeling. And I feel a little space in the hip joint on that one versus this feels a little tight up around here. So let's do the right leg, medial hamstring, slight step forward, a little bit out, bend in the knees and turn the leg in. So that's so cool, Judy, that you can feel it. Bill, we kind of talk about 10 reps per set. Somebody's asking how many reps should be done for each set. But honestly, you could do six, you could do three, you could do 50. Uh, this is the one exercise method that uh, quantity does equal quality. <laughs> and so you kind of can't overdo as long as you're doing it right. Um, but rule of thumb is 10 reps per set. Three yeah. sets of 10 kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good barometer to do three sets of six, 10, 12 or more. Yeah. So, um, John, you want to just clarify, um, you know, when we do let the resistance go, pillar four? Yeah. So I'm standing up, I'm in position, pillar one. I resist the heels pulling back, pillar two. Pillar three, I'm going to stretch with resistance. And right here, I'm done. So I stop pulling that heel back and I just stand up. So there's no resistance on the return to the start position. But you want to be resisting consistently while you stretch. Yeah. So this is the start position standing up. Pull the heel back for resistance. Stretch the medial hamstring with resistance. Stretch, stretch, resist, resist, resist. Let it go. And come back to the start. So that's how we do that. So let's check that out a little bit. Shake it out. Feels really good. Legs feel looser, feel a little stronger, feel like they're ready to go. So I think what we should do now is talk, maybe talk to everybody about their Meridian Association and let's show them an immune stretch. Yeah, we want to be able to turn our immune systems on anytime we need. So we're going to show you a stretch for the shoulders. Can you give them a little bit of an explanation about the Meridian system and how we're thinking about it? Yeah, if anybody's had acupuncture, um, you know that they put needles in different parts of your body specifically to stimulate the energy in an organ. So the muscles we're going to stretch now that we're going to stretch muscles for the shoulders, the outside of the arm and the traps, right? Out triceps, shoulders, and traps. And the meridian that runs along that one specifically is the thymus meridian. It turns on our internal immune systems. So by doing these stretches and, and let's see if we can feel it. Um, you know, when you get a, a, fee, a cold, you get a fever and your body temperature rises, you can turn your body temperature on in that exact specific way with this stretch anytime you want. You feel a cold coming on or you want to, uh, you do this. So uh, we'll be on the mat. We're going to use our arms. It's an arm dominant meridian and we're stretching our traps, shoulders and triceps. Okay, so we're down on the mat with our knees. We're going to tuck our toes under and we're going to sit back. And then we're going to place our arms down on the mat, on the floor, about shoulder width, okay, with the palms facing up. Okay, so we're sitting back. Pillar one, we're in the position. Pillar two, we're going to resist. And what's going on there? Arms are driving down into the mat and forward. Arms are driving down into the mat and forward. Pillar two, resistance. Pillar three is the stretch. Keep resisting and move your body forward. Then pillar four, let it go and relax and come back to the start. You can do this at a table if you don't want to get down on the ground. But we recommend you get down on the ground if you can. 
So get in that start position. Be comfortable. Drive those arms forward for pillar two in the resistance. Move your body forward for the resistance and the stretch. Then let it go. Let it go and come back. We're going to do about a dozen of these. You want to keep those ribs up in your body? Yeah, we're, this is going to give you an example of the meridian association with the muscle groups and the organs. So you want to keep your fascia healthy this way so that your immune system can always be on and ready, ready for action. And so we have 16 primary muscle groups and organs that you can target. So we, you know, there's 16 basic stretches, but just many versions of each. Let's keep going, keep resisting, relax on the way back, resist as your body moves forward. Breathing in and out through your nose, stay with it. Keep those ribs up. Keep those ribs up. Couple more, couple more. Feel your body's heating up? I sure do. How's everybody doing? They're doing good. Everybody's doing it right. Okay. All right. Now, if you want to feel your thymus gland, it's right about here on the center of our chest. You can put your hand there. And in most instances, you feel the heat. And you feel maybe your body general heat turning on. So that's our immune system turning on. Also helps with neck pain. Yeah, it helps with neck pain. I think it would be good to go into the small intestine stretch because that's one that they learned in the training. So maybe go over that and then also, you know, discuss what that helps with. So the muscle group on the top back of the shoulder and the back of the arm is small intestine. We did learn this uh, in the training series. Let's go over the four pillars of stretch again. Arms up in the air. About shoulder height, uh, palms together. So this is the start position. And remember the target muscles are the top back of the shoulder. Okay. So pillar one is the position. Bend the knees a little, be comfortable. Pillar two is the resistance. So press those palms together. Engage the arms and the shoulders. And keep pillar two, keep the resistance. Pillar three is bringing the shoulder, elbows together for the stretch. And then relax on the way out. And let's do a, let's do about a dozen of these. So the small intestine helps move cerebral spinal fluid up into the brain, out of the brain, <laughs> down into the sacrum, and gets that cerebral spinal fluid moving. Uh, this helps with head injuries. If you have a tight sacrum or sacral pain, this is a great stretch to do. Helps digest all our uh, proteins in our body. So let's start resisting with our elbows wide. Keep resisting as we bring our elbows together. Great for the metabolism. Yep. It's a great stretch for the metabolism. Keep going. Now, it's not how far you bring your elbows together. It's how much you're pressing your hands together to get the resistance. And it happens from the start position all the way through. Let's do a couple more. You want to put your, um, get your legs involved and the arms don't have to be raised super high. You want them wherever you're comfortable. Okay. All right. Check that out. Check that out. See, this nice open chest, looser neck. It helps with, uh, also helps with neck pain. So we're at 7.30 um, and we want to save some time for questions and answers for you guys. We went over, let's see, I think one, two, three, four, five, like six stretches, I think, or seven. So, you know, we covered quite a few stretches. We went over the four pillars of a stretch. We talked about fascia and we also talked about the meridian association and, you know, um, 
most of the people that come to us come for pain and injuries. And that's what's showing up in the chat, which is predictable, um, you know, neck pain, hip pain, knee pain, whatever it may be. And of course you want to know the stretches that you need to do to get rid of that stuff. But it's also kind of cool to know that you can help physiology. You know, if you get headaches or if you have digestive issues or heart problems or high blood pressure, whatever it may be, it's kind of cool to know that you're, you're doing something about that while you're stretching. And as you get into it, if you do get into it, that part becomes more and more intriguing over time. It's like most people come to us for a hip injury or a knee problem, but then as time goes by, they're like, wow, you know, my cholesterol got better, my vision got better or whatever it may be. Um, so we're going to take questions and I want to make sure I don't miss any. Um, so let me just kind of, uh, da, 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 da. Ba -bum, ba -bum. this is about where I am. That helped my upper back. Awesome. Simone Eva with so many stretches, how do I know which ones to do every day? If there are several things I want to address. So that's a great question. It's kind of like the inverse of what if my symptom is X, how do I know what to do? And we get that all the time. So here's the deal. Your fascia is a continuous tissue in your body. And we get that of the 70 plus people that are here tonight, everybody has a different symptom, or maybe some of you overlap with some similar symptoms. And so everybody's like, my symptom, my goal, my this, et cetera. We get that. But the thing is the fascia needs to be addressed holistically, no matter what the symptom is. And on top of that, universally in all humans, it tends to get unhealthy in the same places the back of the body, the hamstrings and the back of the shoulders. So my fascia, John's fascia, your fascia, and all of us, it tends to get hard and unhealthy there. Now I might have pain in my right knee and John might have pain in his right shoulder, but the fascia is kind of unhealthy in a similar place, place in both of us. So you want to address it that way. And so in terms of like, how do you know what to do? Well, you've got options. You can learn the system and tell yourself what to do. We'll tell you what to do inside the membership. You can also just not overthink it and just do some stretches, the ones you like. That's going to have an impact because it's this continuous tissue. Um, one of my favorite things to tell beginners is do a full body flow. There are 16 muscle zones, organs, meridians in the body, eight in the upper, eight in the lower. And we call a full body flow going through all 16 of them. That's an amazing thing to do. That's what you did every single day for the first year of stretching, right? Full body flow. I did. Yeah. You know? I, I, yeah. And then over time, you're like, oh, you want to know what? I think I really want to make my knees healthier or, you know, my wrists or whatever. And you can target the muscle groups that are going to do that. You, you find out pretty quick. I realized that the bladder stretch gave me the most relief yeah. for my back pain. So I was doing that throughout the day right off the bat. Yeah. I would say when you work privately with clients, it doesn't matter what they have. Homework is always at least a bladder stretch, lateral okay, hamstring. So we do have individual injuries. Um, yeah. I had scar tissue in the left side of my chest and the left hip flexor, you know, front muscle groups that, yeah. you know, so, you know, we do have to work on those too, like the balancing muscles for those and things like that. Which is why it's great to do a full body flow. And when you say there's so many stretches, it's only 16 muscle groups. If you can count to 16, you've got it covered. Yes, we have multiple um, poses for each muscle group because some people like this pose versus that pose, but there's just 16 muscle groups. It's not that many. Um, let's see, any exercise for baggy women underarms? Yeah, I mean, I would say all eight muscle groups in the upper body are really going to help with that. But I think anything that goes into the tricep, you know, large intestine, small intestine, thymus, and um, which one am I missing, John? Skin. Skin. So, so there, it's like the back of the shoulders and the back of the arms. They're four primary muscle groups. But go ahead. When the muscle stops working properly, and uh, the fascia shows up, and in some cases, uh, fat shows up. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of doing resistance stretches for those muscles. And that'll go. Away. And so something that can be frustrating, not frustrating, but confusing in the beginning for people is we call stretches by their organ. And there's a very specific reason why we do that. We're actually attempting to simplify because so, like I said, there's 16 muscle zones. So each of those zones have multiple muscles associated with them. So if we were to name it by the muscle, it'd be a really long name. You know, we usually 
like nine times out of 10, we say we're stretching the back of the shoulders or we're stretching, you know, the central hamstring. We let you know the area of the body, but the name of the stretch is always going to be the organ, brain, pancreas, lung, well, bladder, because it's one word. We the hamstrings. The yeah. chest has three different meridians Correct. running through it in different positions. So it's very specific that way. It's and over important. time, it gets it gets very simple in a short amount of time. You it learn it actually. too. Um, and it's kind of cool to know that the stretch you're doing affects an organ. Um, let's see. I was diagnosed with myofascial pain. Does this work? Absolutely. We're, this is, this is, we're the fascia people. Welcome to fascia land. <laughs> Candy land, we're fascia land. Um, let's see. Judy, when I began the last stretch, I could not move my right arm upward in front of me because of pain. My arm is moving up without pain. See, look at that. 10 reps. That's the thing. Yeah, it does. It, you, your mobility can increase like that. It absolutely can. Thank you for sharing that, Judy. I love it. Paula, the Meridian Stretch Guide, Q&A and CETA are invaluable. Go for this. You're, uh, you're learning toward, you're leaning, if you're leaning toward the membership, Paula is one of our members. Thanks for putting that in there, Paula. We appreciate it. Yeah, we have a really great group, you know, and I know that um, sales pitches can get to be tedious, but we got to tell you about it. There's no other way to do it. And we really do have an incredible, genuine group of members that we're here for and, and we're part of it. So we'd love to have you join us if you're into it. We'd love to have it. Um, let's see, Galen. So I had surgery on my right shoulder and it's still weak, but my left shoulder has numbness on the upper arm and some pain. Now Are you listening, have you got a stretch that can, that I can do the floor was a bit uncomfortable for me. Well, the thymus stretch that we did, um, if you were to duplicate it in the seated or standing position, you could do one arm at a time. So we were essentially starting with our arm up here pushing up and then moving our body like that. So in order to do a single stretch like that, you wanna start with your arm up, palm facing your hand, grab your forearm or wrist, which is comfortable, and then pull down against resistance. So the target arm is going up and you're pulling down against resistance, relax on the way up, resist on the way down, and you're getting the tricep, shoulder, and it's going into the trap. That's the thymus stretch I would do uh, for the modification on the floor. Um, let's see, Sue. There's I am more specific things too, but that's the general gist of it. I am a full-time caregiver with a very unpredictable schedule due to my elderly father's health needs. How does time zone difference influence the opportunities to take advantage of the live session and coaching? Coaching. Okay, so um, with the membership. 99% of the materials on demand. You can watch it whenever you want. And you can ask us questions through the membership anytime. And we'll exactly, you know, we'll give you very specific things in our responses for you. And then we'll see, we'll stay with you to make sure. We the only two things that are li live and time specific with the membership are we teach a 15 minute class live twice a week. It's just 15 minutes. It's like a bonus. We focus on one muscle group. And if you can't come to it, the recording goes in the membership. So the membership is this like huge funnel of on demand content. And then we just have these two bonus classes every week. So you're not impacted at all. If your time zone or your schedule doesn't fit with those two 15 minute classes, it's minor. Um, let's see, does this help inflammation? Yes. The stretch, the thymus stretch in particular is going to help inform inflammation for the immune system. Well, each muscle group will help with inflammation yeah. for the organ and the muscle group, but like see the generally thymus speaking, is associated with inflammation in the body and we'll just that that's the one you want to do for inflammation. What's really cool about this method, it's a word that's kind of used quite a bit now, a panacea. So no matter what you have going on, if you stretch your body is going to naturally change the thing that needs to change in the fascia. It's a really great way that that happens. So you can target things, but as long as you're just addressing the body holistically, touching on all the muscle groups, whatever the main problem is, is going to get addressed for you individually. Um, Cindy, I am in constant pain, especially my right side, shoulder, hip, knees, and even my lower back. When I tried to do these stretches, my lower back was in pain. Can these be modified by sitting as opposed to standing or going on the floor? So yeah, so um, the answer is yes. For every single muscle group, there are multiple standing and seated options. We have a whole section of that, in fact, inside of our membership. 
Um, yeah, but in time, you're going to be able to get on the floor, which is the goal. Um, the other thing too, that I would say, and it's a little counterintuitive, a lot of people come to us for injury and pain and what we always tell them. And like I said, it's counterintuitive. The more you resist, the less pain you'll have. And the inclination when you're in pain is to like hold back and pull back and not put so much effort because you're protecting yourself, protecting you're in pain. But it's, that's why it's kind of counterintuitive because the more you resist, the more you engage the fascia and the fascia isn't where you have pain. It's where your cause pains being caused from. So if you can activate that fascia, you're not going to have pain. Another way to think about it is that all pain, it could come different ways, but it's specifically from a muscle that's not contracting. And with resistance stretching, you get the muscle to contract yeah. in a very, very safe way. Yeah. And you don't need a big range of motion, but you do need a lot of resistance. Got to resist a lot. So you kind of have to try harder almost if you have a lot of pain because you've got to generate a lot of resistance. Very little move. Um, let's see the hamstring still feels tight. Am I doing it wrong? Oh my gosh. No, you're not. The hamstrings are super tight in all of us. A lot of dense tissue back there. So put it this way, (laughs) very rarely see an elite athlete with amazing hamstrings. It's the Achilles heel of the human race. So like if our hamstrings on a scale of zero to 100 of functionality, hundred being hundred percent functional, zero being not functional at all. The majority of the population, like everyone here, we're at like one or two, uh, maybe three, to four, <laughs> I'll say, don't suck that. you know what I mean? So like we, so just imagine though, if you can increase that by 50%, right? So yeah, they, they will still feel tight, but a little bit goes a long way. So just stick with it. Okay. Let's see. Um, is it just as effective to alternate right than left than one side? Oh, so she wants to like do one rep on one leg, one rep on another leg. If that's, if you're in that state and that's how you need to start off, then, then go ahead. But you, you'll naturally and, uh, rather quickly increase the repetitions, your cardio and endurance increases quite a bit with this. Uh, weight impact, what impact does the stretch have when you have meniscus issues like reduced or shredding? Well, what happens is with all the stretches, they change the rotation at the joints. And if you're using the knee as an example, um, the meniscus, the tissue is not going to grow back, but what's going to happen is you're going to lose the twist. You're going to create space. So you're not going to have the pain. You're going to have a stronger leg. Yeah. Um, the other thing too, is when you do the stretch, the joint suspended. So the stretch isn't going into that tear. It's completely protected. It's just being healed from a distance. So that's how you want to think about it. And particularly the central hamstring is going to help a lot with that. Um, let's see, Paula act. Did I forget John mea culpa? No, you didn't forget anything. Um, let's see, Lucy J members share all kinds of info with each other, including tools and books. Lucy's another one of our members. Yeah. We have a really nice Facebook group that they do that with as well. And Lucy comes to our live classes and and that happens there as well. Um, Lynette, I, I injured my butt and hip. I can't cross my legs. Any suggestions? Great question. One way to think about that is the first answer is hamstrings, but if you're wanting your legs to come together or cross over, and this is for anything, what muscle has to shorten to do that? So if you're crossing your legs over, the outside of your legs are lengthening, but the inside of the legs have to shorten. So for in order to get yourself in a position, you have to stretch the muscle that needs to shorten. So it'd be so like be the inside of the legs, the liver stretch, the adductors, yeah. groin, which is associated with liver and kidney. kidney. Um, let's see, Susan video is on Facebook. Which video is that? I think that's live up there. No, it's not. I didn't start it. I didn't mean to. Um, I don't know what you're asking, Sue. Maybe you can re-ask. Oh, the vi- videos one to three are on Facebook. Absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, how did you figure this out? Great question. More is asking how you figured this out. Uh, Bob Cooley, Genius of Flexibility. I trained with him. I bought his book in 2005 and I spent 10 years with the guy. So that's how I learned it. And I learned it from him. 
Let's see, Eva, how did you learn all this? Um, yeah, I mean, this it's we call it the um, but you know, ultimately, flexibility school of witchcraft it, and wizardry, and then you'll become your own problem solver. You feel it in your body. You know, that's how. Uh, is it backed by science? Sue wants to know. There's one study done that I'm aware of at Harvard and Brigham and Women's for people with chronic asthma. A friend of mine was the trainer. Um, the woman that ran it is now at the NIH. Um, and it was called the resistance stretching for 10 people did it. They each got stretched for an hour at a time, I think five times. So then that's the only study. Nine finished the, the study. Um, Chronic long-term asthma, six of them came off their inhalers. I think Graham only did their stomach and lungs, you know. Um, and he, only, he didn't have a lot of time, and it was only five sessions. So uh, quite impressive if you think about it. But who's going to make money off of it? No one's going to invest in the science if they don't get a return. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Curious. You stated you had a lot of allergies. How does this stretching help that? Well, it's the, it's the Meridian Association, right? So, you know, like if you were go, to go to an acupuncturist, a Chinese medicine doctor for allergies, they're going to put needles in the Meridian that's going to impact that physiologically. And so we just do the stretch because because the meridian channels reside in fascia so if the energy's blocked it's being blocked because that fascia is strangulating and creating density there and so you just stretch it and the channel just naturally opens yeah, it's associated with the quads and the yeah. stomach quads the, the quadriceps um the the short answer always at bendable body is there's a stretch for that <laughs> that will help there's a stretch for that just about everything um the chair stretches are great for travel in the car, on a plane. You're less stiff when you get out. Absolutely. Anita, I started with one month and realized it helped me. So I, I changed the year and I am now in my third year. I can't believe you've been a member for third years, three years, Anita. Um, I love the bendables. I'm staying home and I do it anytime I want to. It's helped me stay young at 80. Yeah, you look damn good for 80 too. I just want to throw that out here, out there. Anita's got some hamstrings. She totally does. Um, let's see more. Does it help with headaches? Absolutely. That's going to be the IT band would help a lot with that. Also large intestine. Uh, Galen, I have scoliosis in the left lumbar SI joint. Any suggestions? Absolutely. You want to answer that? Again, short answer is hamstrings, but there is a muscle group associated with scoliosis. It's the IT band gallbladder um, will help. Um, but like we were saying in the pelvis and hamstring demonstration, you wanted to change the toughest tissue in the body for almost anything. You know, there's specific stretches that will address shoulders, elbows, wrists, and of course, but um, for scoliosis, uh, IT band, gallbladder, and the hamstrings. Um, let's see when you post a video from your live session, are they on face the Facebook membership page? No, they go in the, in the membership. So the membership is its own website. All video recordings go in there. Um, the membership group on Facebook is really just like a place for people to ask questions and meet members and that kind of thing. Um, thank you, John and Sita. Very useful. You're welcome, Elaine. It's good to see you here. All right, you guys, I don't see any more questions. Uh, you want to throw the link one more time in the chat. Remember, if you sign up today, you're going to get, whether you sign up for the monthly or the yearly, you're going to get all the bonuses. Um, and uh, enrollment's open through Saturday. So you have time, it's not sorry, Sunday. So you have time. We have another live class on Saturday where you can put it all to practice. It'll be less talking and really just kind of like a pure 30 minute stretch class followed by Q&A. So you can this ask Saturday. questions. Yep, this Saturday, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Uh, the link for that is on the hub page, but I'll also send out an email so that you have that. Um, let's see if someone is tech challenged, is the website pretty intuitive? Yeah, it's really simple. Like if you can make your way around Netflix, you can definitely make your way around this, but you can give it a try. You know what I mean? And if you don't like it, you also can go and browse it. If you go to our um, main website page, Bentable Body, it says membership and you can go over to the membership and check it out. But yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, it's all relative. John and I do not consider ourselves tech savvy. Um, and I think it's pretty straightforward. 
Let's see. Uh, thank you. I will do these stretches for the next few days and check out the membership. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, we're telling you about our membership and how much we have to offer, but honestly, and truly the content in the free training stands on its own. And if you were to just really do those stretches for the next two, three months, you'd be blown away at the change. You just got to do them. That's the trick. And I think that's where community comes in and, and why we have, you know, these tools and these memberships, because it's hard to have success on your own, but it's a lot easier to have it in community. That's what we see. It's what we've seen for ourselves. And so that's another big benefit. Um, Okay, you guys. So without further ado, really nice evening with all of you. Thank you for being here and keep the questions coming. I hope we see you on Saturday and we will absolutely upload this recording if you want to watch it again. Okay. But everybody was stretching great. So you look good. Yeah, keep thanks. it up. Thanks, thanks for, for being, being here. here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.